What's up guys, we're the Dewok here, finally back after quite the hiatus there. First off, before we get to anything else, I just want to say a uh, huge shout out to like everyone that's gotten this channel over a thousand subscribers, that is insane. Um, I uh, never thought that would happen, and I can't believe it's been a year since I started this thing. So, uh, without ado, and all my, my gushing and all the gushing I wanted to do, but I'm controlling. <laughs> um, just huge thanks to everyone that's been on Discord that's helped keep me involved with this. Um, I've loved helping build teams with everyone there, that's actually what this video is going to be about. Um, and some people apologize as opposed to uh, like team suggestion just DM it to me like oh I'm sorry to bother you this like don't don't be sorry I love that stuff that's what kept me in the game um, even if I'm not actively playing I'm usually watching competitive matches most days and just team building and theory crafting I love it I will never get tired of people asking me questions about it and sending me DMs which I'd encourage everyone to join the discord and do if you have any questions or post in general and ask everyone questions there's lots of good people and it always helps to have multiple eyes review a team and try to catch things that you missed all right so, with that out of the way, I want to get into what the video today is going to be on. I have been trying for a while to think of what a good sort of um, fundamental team building guide would look like. I had one that I've been making for a while and recording it. it. It felt really basic and preachy, and I tried to be too general on overall rules. So, for this, I tried to look at specifically the process I go through in building a team. Um, and depending on how competitive I need the team to be, how in-depth those steps go. Um, just to kind of show how it works. This team suggestion is based on um, a team someone gave me in my Discord. Someone uh, PM'd me this team. They said, hey, I'd like you to look at this, uh, see what you think, what moves, what things go. You know. And after <laughs> a bit of a night missing around with IVs, uh, I ended up switching one Pokemon and it worked. Uh, well, it, I believe it is a team that will work. They're working on breeding it up now. So with this team, one of the things I want to mention is that I didn't use my normal team building strategy, and so we're just going to hop right into it. Normally, when you're going to build a team, I suggest picking a Pokemon or pair or small core that you think or have good reason to believe is strong against the meta, is the meta, or has some very important niche that they fulfill that few other things can. Um, some strong examples are this, are at one point in time, I was saying that Blissey plus Physical Defense Gastrodon was amazing. I still think that's kind of true, although I think there are better options now. Um, that was just a great check to most offensive things at the time a couple months ago of what was just being played then. Um, so a very common one you'll see on most balanced teams, honestly just a lot of teams in general, is going to be your uh, Choice Band Scizor combined with some form of Rotom, either Wash or Mo, maybe Trick Scarf, maybe Trick Specs, one of those forms. Just the standard full turn, powerful momentum upkeeping. So whenever you have the Pokemon that you have in mind for the, like, the core of the team, the team needs to expand from that Pokemon. Fulcrona has, honestly, a phenomenally poor win rate to use its percentage. It's very hot on the usage ladder, but the only Pokemon near its usage that has a under 50% win rate and is fairly decently below it at that. So I'd like to explore what's going on and show how to build a team. This team we're specifically... So here, I'd like to specifically cover Fulcrona teams, mistakes players make with them, and this should be generalizable to every team. This is just my basis. So I've picked my starting premise, Volcarona. With some teams, your core can be pretty ambiguous, right? Uh, let's say you want to go Rotom, Scizor, Balance. Cool. Lots of ways that team can go, right? Lots of ways they can interact. Maybe it's offensive Rotom. Maybe it's setup Scizor. Maybe you've got Trick Scarf, Trick Specs. Maybe you're Banded Scizor. Pretty common. All sorts of things you can do with that, right? But the Volcarona team, if you're going to run Volcarona, Volcarona is not the sixth mod you throw on a team. It's not the fifth mod. It's barely acceptable to be the second mod you throw on a team. If you want to run a good Volcarona team, Volcarona needs to be the mind of the team from the beginning. If you don't like that, don't run Volcarona. If you don't fully invest into it, it's quite a bad Pokemon. Maybe due to beat boots change that quite a bit, but we don't have them, so we're not going to worry about that. So, with all that out of the way, if you want to build a Volcarona team, I'd first start by saying, Volcarona, what do you want to run? Um, generally, I think leftovers are better. Uh, Life Orb fits specific sets, um, and for this, the idea I have in mind doesn't include running anything where Life Orb would be conducive. So, for Volcarona, you have lots of standard moves. Um, generally, you're going to see Dual Stab, Fire, so we're looking at, okay, you don't actually type Fire in there. Oh, sorry, um, I didn't mention this earlier. This is the Pokemon Showdown Team Builder. Uh, it's just found on Pokemon Showdown. It's free. You don't even have to have an account. You just click on it, start building teams. They save locally in your browser, although I recommend having an account to save teams in case cookies reset yada yada um it's a fantastic way to plan out teams and kind of put it all together so uh, after that little tangent volcarona so for this for this specific set i am just looking to run double stab as my offensive moves 
So I've got Bug Buzz, right? Strong Stab hits uh, particularly Garchomp, which can be a pain without uh, some of the other sets out there. Just lots of neutral coverage with Bug. Not much great, but it does give a team some added resilience to um, Pokemon that rely on the fact that Bug isn't a very common offensive type. Specifically, Reuniclus, Max Fizdef for Reuniclus in order to counter Scizor, torn apart by Volcarona. So, Bug Buzz has its place, and in this team you'll kind of see that a player on the fact that Volcarona is an added check to Reuniclus as part of why um, the team kind of fits together, because everyone needs to have some sort of offensive-defensive synergies. So, and in some cases, a Pokemon's defensive synergy can be the fact that it offensively overpowers a certain offensive Pokemon. So, Volcarona scaring out Rotom, or scaring out Fizdef for Uniclus, is a defensive property of Volcarona, even if Volcarona itself is offensive. All right. I'm trying not to go off on too many tangents, but I hope they're useful um, and just show kind of the general process going through my head. So after Bug Buzz, I want a Fire-type move. So on a lot of Volcarona, like specifically uh, Quiver Dance, three attacks, I don't really like uh, Sacred Flame. And I don't like Sacred Flame because that is <laughs> not the name of the move. It's Fiery Dance. Okay, so... Uh, Fire Dance. I do like it on this set, though, because this set, and I'm just going to go ahead, give away the gig here. We're looking at Quiver Dance and Substitute. So the reason I like Fiery Dance on this set specifically is because the set intends to have Volcarona set up multiple times, especially through a sub, and be attempting to beat down powerful defensive Pokemon, potentially from behind a sub, which gives Fiery Dance the perfect potential to give you the boosts. So, while generally Flamethrower is great for three attacks, for Life Orb three attacks, I actually think you're so invested in it that Fire Blast gives you some important KOs you don't pick up with Flamethrower, so you should definitely run the calcs and see if that's what you need with your team. I think that's worth considering. The reason I have Substitute is because I've been observing a huge amount of Highlighter games, and in a disturbing majority of them, Substitute Volcarona fully 6-0s a team. The reason I say this is most Pokemon that check Volcarona rely on status. And with Blissey, uh, and Chansey still runs Seismic Toss, but with Blissey, the addition of Teleport into the game means that most Blisseys have dropped Seismic Toss. The reason for this is the addition of Teleport meant that Blissey's effective move full shrunk. Having Teleport's amazing, but you always need a healing move, either Wish or Softball, you know, depending on which route you're going. Some go Protect, some don't. A lot of people run Toxic. Without Toxic, normal Volcarona pulls over your team. So generally, you're gonna see Toxic as the main answer on Blissey. Doesn't have to be, but almost always. But then, the last move, well, Toxic plus Seismic Toss used to be very good Blissey coverage. The fact that Gengar, with the addition of Nasty Plot, has risen up to set up on these sort of Blisseys, along with Schindler following suit, although usually just substituting and maybe sub call mine, but that's really rare. Generally, it's just uh, force a sub or uh, threaten to trick Scarf. Whatever it is. Ghosts are able to set up, and Gengar being a very prevalent setup mon, has really stopped Blissey's from running Seismic Toss. This is where Substitute Volcarona shines. Substitute Volcarona can absolutely destroy any Blissey running Shadow Ball or Flamethrower in order to counter two of Blissey's usual biggest menaces, which are going to be Gengar and Scizor. So, this set preys upon the fact that Volcaronas are generally assumed to run away from Blissey. So, a Volcarona set that can come in on Blissey, substitute on the turn where Blissey attempts to teleport out, and then start Quiver Dancing up can quickly sweep a whole team. While you do lose the coverage of either Hidden Power Rock or Giga Drain, potentially Psychic or Hurricane, I think are the, the four main options for your fourth move on, or your third move in Volcarona outside of Quiver Dance. Um, I think that on this set, it's definitely worth it because a lot of teams, the amount of boost you can get in the protection behind a Quiver Dance, or the protection behind a substitute is invaluable. So here, um, I would go, what's the recommended? Actually, yeah, this is a set I agree with. So this is a very, fairly lazy EV spread. And when I say lazy, I mean that I don't actually know what I need. Maybe to hit a certain leftovers number, I do this, or whatever. This is set for level 100. Uh, you can calculate yourself for level 50. And what do I mean by a leftovers number? Uh, which means a number divisible by 60. So, leftovers, if you're not familiar, uh, heal for 1 16th of your health. So, you mess around with this number. These won't be accurate. Again, um, the same IVs that give you a 1 16th dividable HP at 100 will not be for 50, so you need to calc that. Um, I haven't done that on this. Again, this is just a rough example of what to expect. So while you could just take the standard set, like the recommended one, I do think there are important changes that will make you specifically better at certain things. Having the extra recovery really matters when you're spamming lots of substitutes over a prolonged game and trying to heal up. 
where it trying to survive the onslaught of offensive Pokemon, especially against a lot of defensive Pokemon. Once you get that substitute up, you trick them into like switching out. So they think you're walled by them. You get the sub up. After a couple of Quiver Dances, Volcarona can sit in on its own because suddenly those super effective Scalds, once you're at plus three spit off, Volcarona is already sizable spit off. Volcarona doesn't care, and that's when things get in hand. So this is a good starting baseline. I'd recommend changing the HP to fit uh, exactly what you need. There are some other options. Like let's say you really, ah. Uh, you really need to outspeed a certain Pokemon, or you know that at plus one modest, you know, you're not outspeeding Salamence, right? Like, you're not going to try to speed tie Salamence, because what if Jolly? So, if you're not going to risk it, then you probably don't need to be a max speed modest, right? You can you can move this to whatever you decide you need to be faster, or whatever, at plus one, you're faster. So let's say, I just really want to be faster than Gengar at plus one. I could probably get away with something like this, honestly. It, it really depends what you're going for, but that's what I'm saying. This is a good baseline set, but you should adapt it further. So now we're going to take a look at the team itself. So instead of building out fully from Volcarona and then saying, step one, Volcarona, step two, what beats substitute Volcarona? I'm saying, hmm, well, Rock Blast Conkluder, that's a huge problem. What's a good answer to Rock Blast Conkluder? Well, that's a pretty big question, but a good answer to Conkluder in general is Kafferigus, right? So maybe you throw in Kaffa. And instead of building the team like that, which is normally the way I'd build a team, and then be like, okay, well, if you're running a uh, Volcarona, Kafferigus, I mean, like, Chandelure is bad. What do you do, right? Walls, both of them. And then so you kind of devolve into maybe I adapt a set. Instead of that approach, which I do recommend, and I will happily discuss as much as anyone wants in Discord, and in the comments, let me know. I love talking about this sort of thing. Uh, for the sake of brevity, I do want to move on to their team and discuss the basics of the team I was given and a different approach. So while picking a bunch of meta-relevant Pokemon that seem like they fit well together is a decent strategy, I do think you lose some of the inherent uh, cohesion the team gets when it's put together piece by piece for each piece to cover each other's weaknesses. That being said, I was able to keep most of the pieces of this team intact while forming a cohesive team that really focuses on abusing momentum gaining moves to always keep your rocks up, keep your opponent's rocks at bay, toxic important targets, land unexpected KOs, and set up for that all important bulk run of sweep. The one main issue with this team, I think a lot of it is well put together, but you do not have a fighting resist outside of Volcarona, and Volcarona is not a fighting resist. So, this leaves us with a conundrum. I do not think you can run a team without a fighting resist with Conqueror in the game. If you are max physical defense Garchomp, max defense Rotom, Pharaoh, Blissey, you're freaking Volcarona, and max defense Scizor, maybe. But why? Just run something that deals with it. Um, a lot of great options, again... We're thinking Reuniclus, although I don't really think that synergizes where I want this team to go. So, I went with, as I hinted to earlier, Kafferigus. So now I'm going to jump ahead. This is the team I was given. I'm trying to think of synergies. And then I went ahead and kept as much as I could while trying to keep the core idea of the team and changing only what I had to. Um, I still think that this team works just as well as a team built, you know, fully from the ground up. I think that the Pokemon he put had we had like, very good synergy in mind, and I tried to amplify that with all the decisions here. A lot of these sets are not completely standard, and I'm not saying that, for instance, the best Garchomp set is uh, <laughs> max speed and spadef mixed HP chomp with uh, rocks toxic, but for this team, I feel like it is the best set suited to achieve this team's specific goal. So don't look at this and say, oh, okay, so I should be running Garchomp like this. Maybe if you're running this team, but again, really depends on what's going on. So, we're going to start with the basics. The core concept of this team was, again, first, abusing momentum to keep up pressure and force holes my opponent's team for Volcarona to take advantage of and sweep. Second, to abuse powerful defensive pivot Pokemon who cannot heal themselves. Kofferigus and Rotom are usually limited by the fact that, while quite bulky and having great utility and actually decent damaging moves, they can't really heal. Rotom has pain split, but, you know, that's kind of cheating it at best. Kofferigus... While it wants to run Helmet, if it runs Helmet, it's just sitting there until it dies. Wish Toxic Blissey, or Wish Teleport Blissey was my answer. I think Teleport Blissey is insane in general, and Wish Teleport is truly incredible, especially in teams like this, where you can abuse multiple Pokemon's defensive capabilities to their fullest without having to deal with the nasty downsides of them not healing in and of themselves. That being said, I tried to make as much of the team as resilient as possible to hold out and wait for the Chinx in your opponent's armor to appear, to pounce upon them, and exploit the Volcarona Sweep. With the other moves on Blissey, I think Toxic is very important, as I have no intention of losing the Volcarona myself, and I think this covers quite a lot of Pokemon. So a lot of defensive Pokemon 
outside of Blissey are actually quite afraid of Toxic. Why? Because no amount of feeling will beat Toxic in the long run. Blissey and Chansey are, of course, immune to this as they have natural cure. So against other defensive Pokemon, Toxic Blissey is actually a good, uh, a good answer. Wish Teleport, again, heals your other defensive Pokemon, allows a much more aggressive style. And for the last option, I'm not set on Shadow Ball. The reason I have Shadow Ball here is that while Cofferigus is actually set up in a way that is supposed to, in a sense, trap, but definitely handle the threats that Gengar and Chandler pose to a team like this, it's not perfect. Cofferigus can't switch into Shadow Ball and then survive the next one and hit back. That's just not a realistic thing Cofferigus can do. So while Cofferigus is meant to deal with that threat, I still think it's threatening enough that Blister running Shadow Ball covers a lot of your bases. There are some things this leaves open, of course. Uh, this Blissey, not very good against Taunt or Tox or Taunt or Substitute Gengar. Now, most Blissey aren't, but give and takes. Um, potentially, some fixes, as I have looked over this team in the long run, it doesn't have the best Gyarados coverage, so I think there is certainly an argument to be made for potentially um, Rotom Wash, in the, or sorry, not Rotom Wash, for potentially Porygon 2, in the case of Blissey, and adapting to see where that goes. All right. I'll try to be a little more quick with the rest of these sets that aren't too unorthodox. So for Blissey, um, this was set to be a leftovers number. Um, I, I don't know why it was just floating around. It may or may not be accurate. I may have set it for 100. I think I set it for 50. But of course, check yourself. Um, then with EVs and nature, I just went calm defense. I do want to touch on uh, natures right now. So you have two stats that you want on Blissey. You want defense, you want HP. Or you want defense, you want spit up. With such a high HP stat, uh, each point of defense is just significantly greater than a point in HP in terms of how it defends you. Just multiplication, um, 6 times 6 is always more than 5 times 7, right? So the closer two things become to each other, the better it is. So increasing your HP when the HP is already the higher number is going to do less than decreasing your increasing your defense when defense is the lower number. I hope that makes sense. That's so the idea here is that while I want Blizzy to be able to hit tank defense and spadef, Giving Blissey a spadef nature increases the already massive base spadef. Giving it a defense nature gives me 10% more of 10. It's not exactly all just based off base stats, but the idea is that if I wanted to achieve these same stats, right? This 403 defense and this one, 403 spadef, 119 defense, you cannot do that with a defensive nature. You can argue that a defensive nature is more important for certain things, and that's certainly true. There's a reason to change natures, and the reason to change natures from the nature that gives you the most stats is because you need a specific thing that that nature does. The best example I can think of this is when I made the video with Substitute, Swords Dance, uh, somewhat bulky Excadrill. In the set, I needed Excadrill to hit a certain speed, I needed to hit a certain HP threshold to survive, uh, to have itself specifically survive Blissey's and Chansey's Seismic Toss, and more importantly, for uh, Dusclops and Cofferigus, which were seen a bit more back then, I just wanted to be better safe than sorry, it was to survive their Nightshades so that I could easily avoid the will o wisp withering away. So in order to hit those stats, I then had the leftovers I could dump into uh, attack and a little bit of defense. The thing with Excadrill is you have much higher base attack than speed. So while I did hit all the required stats with that, as someone pointed out in Discord in a DM, which is very nice of them, but again, if I'm doing and saying something stupid, like it's, it's not going to hurt my feelings. Just post it out there in the general Discord and be like, hey, uh, you are wrong. There is a better set. And that's great. Everyone should see that. Um, and then we can all talk about it. So they are, of course, perfectly correct. I was using the wrong nature. I was running Jolly. I was running the false assumption that Jolly was necessary to hit what, uh, the stats that I needed. Well, it turns out, because Excadrill has such a higher base attack, it was objectively better stats-wise to go adamant. I achieved the exact HP I needed. I still hit the speed I needed. And I just had higher attack overall. It is an objectively better Pokemon. There are reasons to run Jolly Excadrill. If you need to hit a specific a specific speed for your team that Adamant cannot hit, then you need Jolly. If you are not going for a specific speed you cannot hit without Jolly, it is just worse, stat-wise speaking, than going Adamant. Um, again, I hope that kind of makes sense. It's a general principle where if a Pokemon has better base stats in a specific stat, and you don't have a like concrete, like calculated reason why I need this stat to be at this point, which it does not naturally reach, then, again, be honest, go with the nature that increases the most stat. More stats on your Pokemon are just overall better. Now, I'll touch on Cofferigus because it was important with Blissey. 
This Kofriga set is a bit interesting, I will admit. Um, this is not as much of a lazy set. So, what this Kofriga is supposed to do is set up Toxic Spikes to wear an undefensive Pokemon. It's knockoff, once again, triple defensive Pokemon. The whole point of the team is crippling your opponent's defenses to where Substitute Volcarona can sweep on through. Then you have Will-O-Wisp, helping handle physical attackers. This could potentially be changed, maybe even to Pain Split. Um, oh, I goofed up earlier when I said Cough didn't have Pain Split. But, so the issue here is that lots of the best physical attackers, most commonly you're seeing a lot of... Um, yeah, I've seen Heracross popping up quite a bit, along with, of course, your standards of Scizor and Conqueror. In Conqueror and Heracross's case, they're already Burn Orb, so Will-O-Wisp doesn't do much to deter them. And while it's fine against Scizor, no self-respecting Scizor is going to stay in against Kafarigas. So, this set's a decent option, but I feel like it fails in some key ways. That being said, um, while the last move is debatable, I still like the core idea of the set, of crippling defensive answers to Volcarona. So let's get into the set itself and how it works. Max HP, because, once again, um, you want to be as close to 6x6 as possible while getting away from 5x7. So, because HP is the lowest stat, as many uh, EVs as you put in HP, that will give you more overall bulk than putting them in defense, right? And splitting them between defenses. Like, you, you will be a more well-rounded defensive Pokemon investing in HP. Same reason why you see Rotom's always invested in HP if they're going defensive. Now, once again, applying the rationale we used for natures and sending which natures give the most stats. Even though I'm going with what appears to be a Spideff favor spread, I still wanted that defensive nature because the Spideff spread is not to make Kofarigas a Spideff wall. That's just not going to do that on this team with what I need. However, I needed to survive enough Spideff hits while still functioning as a check to primarily fighting based high power physical attackers. What this said is, is it's not aimed to transform Kofarigas into a different type of wall, it's made to get Kafarigas as close to the line as possible so it still fulfills its intended role on my team while allowing it to counter an expected counterplay to Kafarigas. Some examples of this are going to be Gengar, with a nasty plot potentially, or just Gengar Raw, and, sorry, <laughs> not nasty plot. That's a different set. This set does not survive nasty plot. And the other option is going to be Troy Scarf Chandelure. Both of these Pokemon easily kill a normal physical defense invested Kafarigas, and as one of those Pokemon, I would expect to do as such. So, if Kofarigas kills a Pokemon, and this Pokemon switch in, I needed this Kofarigas to be able to survive. Why? It frees up the option for me to run a different option. Uh, it frees up the option for me to run a different move on Blissey. I could potentially condense this down to one roll and turn Kofarigas all into physical defense, just rely on uh, my Shadow Ball Blissey. But I felt like spreading that rollout across the team was more important and allowing me to trap a Pokemon, especially taking out. Chandelure is incredibly important for Volcarona, so that's why I felt like this set was as important as it is. So max HP maximizes their stats. Defense boosting nature, we want to be a defensive tank. This special attack. This special attack is honestly just what's left, what's left over. It gives you a 95 plus chance of killing standard Gengar with a Shadow Ball after rocks. The reason why it's just rocks and not accounting for uh, Gengar's subsequent HP recovery is if you killed a Pokemon, so you're not switching this into Gengar, ever, right? If Gengar subs as you switch in, you die. If it plots as you come in, you die. If it Shadow Balls as you come in, you die. You don't do that. This is when Gengar or Chandelier come into you. You can use this set. Um, and when that is the case, you do not get rocks that when you switch in after Pokemon, or you do not get leftovers when you switch in after Pokemon dies. So your Pokemon gets KO'd, Gengar comes in. It takes rocks. At that point, this Shadow Ball will kill it 95% of the time. The reason it's that is that I also needed this given Spideff stat. This Spideff stat is what allows me to survive not only Gengar, or Shadow Ball, but survive Life Orb Gengar, Shadow Ball, 75% of the time, which, while not great, you rarely see Life Orb Gengar. If you do, it's not a threat to the team. It wears itself down entirely too quickly. And it also allows me to survive the more powerful base stats of a Scarf, Chandelier, Shadow Ball, which is another thing that this team is quite afraid of. Then... The speed here? The speed here is actually there for a reason, it's not just random sats I'd lying around. I wanted this Kofarigas to be just faster than opposing Reunion Close and Kofarigas, allowing me to use the fact that I have Shadow Ball to get off some actually fairly decent hits against them. You can look at the calcs. Kofarigas is no joke against opposing Reunion Close. So, that covers why Kofarigas is everything that it has. Probably a bit too in-depth. Maybe I edit that down. Maybe I edit out me saying this. We'll see. Alright, so now let's get into some of the meat of the comp. Once again, another set that is... Of course, not unique to me. I'm not going to claim to have invented Spideff Garchomp, but a set that you don't see too often and I think is actually 
fairly useful on this team. So this Garchomp set isn't meant to be the main offensive pressure of the team. In fact, it's not meant to provide much offensive pressure at all. It's meant to get Stealth Rocks up and keep them up. What Pokemon want to get rid of your Stealth Rocks? Well, Mandibuzz is a fantastic answer to Garchomp, fantastic rock remover. Okay, Toxic that. We don't want to deal with that. Uh, Fire Blast was an option to do a Skarmory, although I feel that that's the most expendable move. So we're going to focus on the last three moves. Toxic. Great for getting those defensive Pokemon that want to remove your rocks. Opposing Rotoms, Toxic. Now they're on a timer. They can come in, switch into your rocks, get rid of your rocks, but they're Toxic. Uh, Stealth Rock, once again, you need to keep the ability to use it as much as possible. Earthquake, very important to threaten up Pokemon. Another reason why the Scarchomp is here is that by having Blissey not have a direct answer to opposing Substitute Volcarona, I don't want to get swept by my own Sweeper. This Spideff Garchomp allows Garchomp to always live a plus one Life Orb Volcarona Bug Buzz. Most likely they're not Life Orb, but I still live it just in case. Now you would say, Life Orb Substitute, that doesn't make any sense. And um, you're right, but I just want to cover my bases. Let's say something has already happened to Blissey, I needed to sack it at some point in the game. Volcarona gets a plus one. We find out it's Quiver Dan. Like, we find out it's Life Orb. This is also important because it allows you to stay in on lots of Rotoms that you normally have to switch out from. Um, suddenly, Rotoms Hydro Pump is really more of a nuisance than a threat to Garchomp, and lots of Pokemon's Hidden Power Ice are going to threaten it. Another key reason why I value Spideff Garchomp on this team is that it's able to stay in on Tentacruel, eat its Ice Beam taking 60% or something ludicrous from a Tentacruel Ice Beam, Earthquake is there to help deal with Tentacruel. Tentacruel is another one of the big problem Pokemon for Volcarona. By offering up Garchomp as a tasty prize, look, I am leaving Garchomp in against your Tentacruel. Slurp it up. You can hopefully bait the Tentacruel into getting hit by the Garchomp. Alternatively, if Tentacruel senses the gig is up and switches out, they haven't spun away your rocks. It's a win-win. Garchomp achieves its purpose of keeping up rock pressure and keeping opposing spinners and Volcarona checks at bay. Now, let's move to Scizor. This Scizor set is fairly boring. Um, sorry, this is an HP number for lefties. Uh, you're running lefties because you want longevity. And of course, if you do have to block a big hit, wish blessy. Okay, for Scizor. The reason this Scizor is here is that I really just felt that, I don't know, there's something about Banded Scizor that just feels right. Banded Bullet Punch is a fantastic cleaning move. Let's you stop uh, a worst case scenario, runaway cloister, right? Smashed too many times, and now you really have no way of dealing with it. Bullet Punch Scizor, here to save the day. Banded U-Turn, fantastic pressure move. Um, it's also part of my strategy of dealing with Pokemon like Reuniclus. It doesn't beat it on its own, but fairly nice. Pursuit, not as many people expect it as they should. Lets you get rid of some pesky ghost types, especially Pokemon that lock themselves into a certain move. Um, once you find out that specifically maybe a Chandelure is Scarf after it goes for a Shadow Ball, Bring in Scizor, remove the threat, Volcarona sweep, easy peasy. Superpowers here, um, just because it threatens lots of Pokemon. I honestly don't think it has to be. Um, and while setup Scizor could be an option on this team to give you two setup options, one physical, one special, I actually, I'm not ruling that out as a bad idea at all. Um, I think Aerial Ace is actually another good option here to beat down, beat down some pesky Conkleders. Not needed, just an option. Uh, superpower generally is meant to handle Pokemon like Ferrothorn, but Ferrothorn in this case is just set up fodder. It is Volcarona, loves opposing Ferrothorn on this team, which is why I think dropping Fire Blast from Garchomp could be ideal. So, the standard Scizor, run your favorite Bandit Scizor set, run your favorite other Scizor set. The most important part is it keeps up momentum with U-Turn and gives your team priority pressure. Having a priority move somewhere on your team is important, especially if it's a powerful one. There's a reason Scizor and Conkleder are two of the most used Pokemon because not only are they good Pokemon just within their own spheres, but they bring uniquely powerful priority moves that benefit any team. So, we've got that out of the way. Then, let's look at the second class member of the team. You've got your Rotom Wash. Defog, Bolt Switch, Hydro Pump, Protect. So, with this set, what I really needed Rotoms to do is I'm looking at the teams that could be detrimental to this team. Um, for Rain, well, I mean, no amount of Kingdra is realistically going to break through uh, Calm, Spideff, Blissey. So, what's the next threat? What about Kabutops? Kafarigas, as great as it is, isn't great against Kabutops. In the rain, you can't switch into a waterfall. You're dead. That's where Rotomosh comes in. I need Rotomosh to do one thing, and a couple others, but mainly stop Kabutops from sweeping my team. 
Volcarona is awful against Kabutops, and I need to make it so every time you bring in Kabutops, not only am I blocking it with the Rotom Wash, but I am then threatening to use Fault Switch to get more pressure on your team. I'm saying, hey, do you want to try to land an extra Stone Edge on this Rotom Wash? You give them every incentive they can to weaken that, <laughs> uh, to weaken that Kabutops, to allow that chink in their armor for Volcarona to get it set up. Substitute, again, also great against Aqua Jet users. So, um, Volt Switch, Hydro Pump, pretty standard in Rotom Wash, probably don't have to defend those. Defog, again, this is your core defogger with the Volcarona team. You need hazards off of your side of the field. Volcarona, four times weak to rock, shouldn't have to say anything more. Volcarona often pairs with spinners, and I think that's fair as well. I think a spot could certainly be Starmie, and there's a very good argument for it. Uh, I think a defensive sort of Starmie would work best, but whatever works. Um, on this team, though, I do think that Volt Switch is really important to the identity of the team. You have three Pokemon with momentum gaining moves. You have Scizor's U-Turn, Rotom's Volt Switch, and Blissey's Teleport. All of this helps to just achieve the goal of keeping whatever you need to be, uh, whatever you need to happen, you are in control of it. It's never, I have to switch out and help my opponent do something. It's, yeah, I'll take a hit. I'll Volt Switch second, but I'll be in control. That There's a reason, like it is not by accident, that Scizor and Rotom Wash have zero speed. They have zero speed because if they're in a mirror, I want to have the slower U-turn. I want to have the slower Volt Switch. Scizor sometimes creep their speed to a better handle Skarmory. This team, Skarmory is not an issue. This is a Volcarona sweep team and a team that keeps rocks up. With Sturdy Broken, Skarmory is not the slightest issue to Volcarona. So, with that issue out of the way, min speed. This gives me exactly what I need. Um, while these stats aren't too creative, I do think that this is a set that I actually do agree with. This is lazy. Um, but also, I do think that the calculated set is the lazy set here. I want no speed. I don't care nearly as much about special attack. Maybe a couple attack makes me hit a certain benchmark, but I just want to survive as many hits from Kabutops or other physical attackers like Darmanitan as I can. The reason for leftovers and protect is A, protect lets you scout choice users, specifically opponent scissors. Let's say uh, Scizor tries to go for a superpower, right? Trying to get your Rotomosh, you can go Kafarigus, or you can go protect as a Scizor reveals it's going to U-turn, at which point, Suddenly, you have an interesting uh, dilemma. You could go Kafarigus, or you could Garsh. There's lots of options you can do by finding out what your opponent is choice into. This is especially great against Hydreigon, where turn one, Rotom is a fantastic lead, and Hydreigon is very often a lead, especially if it's Scarf, protects lets you see what they're going for. If you know your opponent is just going to U-turn out on you, perfect, free full switch. If you know they're going to stay in and hit, perfect, free Blissey, and then teleport after that. So this team gives you all of the pivots you could possibly want, and allows you to keep up pressure. Um, Protect also serves the added bonus of allowing Rotom Wash an edge in the Conqueror War. Conqueror is usually quite good against Rotom Wash because although Rotom Wash is bulky physically, <laughs> Conqueror just does absurd damage. However, Protect allows Rotom Wash to go up 12.5% in the HP War every time it uses it. The way this works is especially if it's a burned Conqueror, Conqueror loses 12 or loses 6.25 you gain 6.25 by protecting on that turn. So even though you just protected, you did nothing, now you're up 12.5%. So you have the ability to scout Bant choice Pokemon, the ability to just scout movesets in general, find out if they are running that secret gas move, if Gyarados really is packing power up and you need to panic. Um, I would always rather have the ability to scout for something like that than just lose my Rotom Wash. And if Gyarados is packing power up, you've kind of Kind of got to play around. I think uh, Rock Slide Garchomp is something I might heavily consider because you're really not going to see Power Whip plus Ice Fang plus Waterfall. And, you know, kind of hope that's enough. <laughs> All right. So that should cover the rationale for this Rotom set. Finally, Volcarona. Of course, lefties, Flame Body, Sub, Fire Dance, Quiver Dance, Bug Buzz. Modest because you're looking to set up multiple times. Timid's main advantage is to be able to outspeed, like, Scarf Timid Hydreigon after a boost or Timid Hydreigon without a boost. Uh, that being said, I think that I would certainly prefer, especially if I was running a Hydreigon set, to run Modest Hydreigon. So I don't think that's a use scenario that's even too important. Now, as I said, you could probably drop some of this to get some more bulk here, or uh, maybe even Spideff bulk to live Scalds from defensive Pokemon and keep your subs up longer, you know, Shadow Balls from Blissey. Whatever it is. All right, so this kind of shows how I'd adopt a team from scratch. This shows what you do. You'd start with, all right, what do I want to accomplish? I want to sweep someone with Volcarona. I want to use Volcarona to put huge holes in opponent's team. All right. What does this Volk set do? All right. I want to run Sub Volk because I think it beats this. Great. This set does not beat every Pokemon in the game. 
what Pokemon beat this set. I don't know, Rock Blast Conqueror, you know, lots of others. Cool. We're going to put it in the Pokemon place that stop this Pokemon from doing their thing. And then you just expand out there. Like, okay, now I've got these two Pokemon, but you lose Chandelure, etc. So, a little bit of recap. Then, they're just looking at a core of Pokemon that are known to do well. You have, of course, your uh, very prominent Rotom plus Scissor combination to keep up momentum. I prefer to think of it as Rotom, Scissor, Blissey now. I think they're an incredibly potent three Pokemon momentum team. Then you have your uh, your win condition, Volcarona, and you have Garchomp. I think Ferrothorn is a decent idea, as this team really does enjoy hazards, but I feel like you are you know, too crippled and too weak to physical attacks, specifically fighting type attacks, to run Ferrothorn on this team. So, finally, in trying to cover every Pokemon's weakness, trying to cover all the specific answers to your team, this is what I've come up with. Certain spreads, certain sets. Hopefully I've explained rationale of why I do this. I would like to show this team in game, and I've been making an absurd amount of money from the Lunar Event, so I actually should be able to breed up all these Pokemon. By breed up, I have all of them. But I should be able to rebreed them to what I need. Pokemon, well, please add an item so that we can change natures. Please, just make it like an ability item. So you've built your team. You've gone over what you think is important, what you think counters the Pokemon that are out there. Now, you need to pull up a list of the OU Pokemon and look at it. Number one, Tentacruel. Does this team handle Tentacruel? Well... Volcarona, especially after enough Quiver Dances, is pretty easy, or is pretty easily able to shrug off most special attacks from Tentacruel. However, Haze Tentacruel would be a big problem. Garchomp is there to attempt to lure in Tentacruel, while Rotom Wash aims to chip it down, and Scizor can use Pursuit against Tentacruel, because again, Scizor getting burned for the greater goal of chipping down a Tentacruel that cannot recover is certainly worth it. Using Garchomp to force Tentacruel to continually switch into rocks also something this team aims to do. Then, okay, that's a fairly decent enough answer to how you beat Tentacruel. So, how do you beat Cloyster? Well, high reliance on getting up rocks, max physical defense throughout a Mosh, a Copperigus, a Garchomp. Scratch that. Garchomp, not a good answer to Cloyster. Uh, Volcarona, however, an amazing answer to Cloyster. If rocks are up, Cloyster trash it off, tears right through it. Not the best. I'm gonna be honest. Team could have better... Uh, could have better cloister insurance. However, full defense, Rotom Wash, very good. All right, Gengar. I feel the team is very adequately created to cover Gengar, to cover most common sets. Uh, while Trick Scarf isn't great, having the option of Cough Regus against a potential Trick Scarf as they predict you to switch Cough into Blissey, I think pretty important. Um, Blissey with Shadow Ball, Cough Regus with the Anti-Ghost set should cover it. So I've gone through this list with functionally every Pokemon on here. I feel like I have decent answers to most all the meta can throw at me. And after you've looked at each individual Pokemon and say, what to do about this Pokemon, you have to examine what to do about this Pokemon in this situation. Well, sure, it's easy to say, okay, uh, Blissey beats Gengar. Cool. There are lots of Blissey sets, or there are lots of Gengar sets that this Blissey can't actually handle. Or what happens if Blissey is up against a rain team with Gengar? It's been chipped by having to switch in to a, let's say, rain-boosted Hydro Pump and teleport out, now suddenly, it doesn't handle Gengar. How does your team handle those situations? And the answer is that there is no perfect team. There will be no team that always handles every answer in every situation, except for Trapping Rain. That team was broken. I love it, but I'm so glad it's gone. So, that out of the way, how do you deal with these situations? You try to minimize them as much as possible. You try to have as many redundancies as possible. Sure, Scizor is a pretty good answer to Reuniclus. Uh, but Volcrona, also a good answer to Reuniclus. Plissy, Shadow Ball, also a good answer to Reuniclus. Confrigus, also a good answer to Reuniclus. This isn't because I'm mortified of Reuniclus and I feel like I need four answers to it. It's because these are answers against lots of other things, but it's nice to have redundant checks. Sure, Confrigus can maybe handle ghosts, but it's nice to let Blissey do it as well. Sure, Blissey can probably handle, handle most Volcarona, but it's great to be able to have a Garchomp that can easily survive Volcarona and take it out with uh, Earthquake or Rock Slide. So... Building redundancies into your team is the best way to deal with this. The final thing I'd recommend when looking at a team is not just look at Pokemon and not just look at Pokemon in certain situations. You want to examine what team comps can pose an issue. Like, what happens if you're up against Volt Turn, right? We have an answer to Scizor, but is your answer to Scizor something that can continually be exploited by Rotom Wash? If so, probably need to examine what's going on. Maybe you change some things in your team. Getting ran around in circles by Volt Turn is no fun for your opponent. So, Rain, another important answer. How do you beat Rain? Not just how do you beat Kingdra, but how do you beat Kingdra back to back at Bootops? What if there's Ludicolo? Do you just lose? 
And I feel like with a popularity refrain, the answer to that should not be yes. I have seen lots of teams where the answer is, if my opponent is running a competent rain team, I lose. This is a high ladder too. And um, I think that's very greedy. It certainly works sometimes, as your opponent might not be running rain. I feel like lots of teams could incorporate um, components into the team to cover rain without compromising the team's core defensive purpose. See example is Kofariga set, which is not perfect. There are certain things that could be tweaked, and I think I will tweak it in the near future. However, the idea of you have your core defensive purpose, but you don't need all your stats to fulfill that core defensive purpose. This is exactly the same thing we saw with um, Spideff Mandibuzz, where you would actually run the exact same nature. It was bold Spideff Mandibuzz, where once you had that bold nature on Mandibuzz, even with no uh, defense investment, just max HP, you were able to check the physical attackers you needed to check, at which point, sure, you could have put more physical defense to check them better, and that would be good. It would be good to have more defense in those situations. But often, it was more important to check a variety of threats than to check a specific threat you're already meant to check even better. So, um, that's just kind of my, my general ideas on uh, the theory of how to build teams, generally of uh, team crafting, team testing, and of course, most important part is really testing. Theory crafting is great and all, but you need to see how it plays out in match. How hard is it to make the correct decisions? How much does the team force the player to make awkward situations, or how smooth do the answers really come up? Like, how often can you actually answer opposing Chandler and Gengar with your Kafarigas? You can see, after testing, if that situation just doesn't work, maybe try something different. Maybe uh, one potential thing I've snowballed is maybe is Death Jellicent, right? Maybe mix Jelly. It struggles against uh, Conqueror Stone Edge, but I digress. That's just an issue that I think is worth exploring. So, um... I hope that covers just about everything. Once again, please give me your questions. I try to answer comments. However, YouTube's comment answering system is, I mean, fine, but eh. I'd really recommend joining the Discord. I love to talk to everyone in there. There's lots of other people in there who will also help answer questions. Also, you know, just fun to hang out, talk about Pokemon. <laughs> All right. Um, yes, this 10-minute quick guide to team building got a little bit longer than I expected. But all right, I hope to see you guys in the near future. I have a couple more videos I would like to make. Bye.